welcome. We are continuing our in-depth look back at God of War Ragnarok, uh, probably mine and Matt's game of 2022. Uh, you've joined me and Matt. And uh, Matt, did you want to kick off discussion for this episode? Uh, you said you had a question. I do Can have you... a question. Do you want to start it with kind that? kind of leads in. I can start, yeah. Basically, what I wanted to ask you was about the manipulation of Odin <laughs> and uh, just the whole Odin story arc. But um, the specific question I'll leave until we get to that point, but I think it would do us uh, some good to kind of start at the very beginning when Odin is introduced and our first impressions of him mm. as a character. What are your mm. thoughts? Matt? Mm. I have watched that first scene with Thor and Odin multiple times uh, over the last few days and it is just a uh, uh, if you were studying how to c- c- generate any kind of theater drama because it's it's one room which I love I love uh, some element of real stagecraft like it mm. could be in a play it could be in a TV show it could be in a short film these these just handful of people in this room and how straight away Thor he's fucking massive he's a big big motherfucker (laughs) and the first thing that happens is you see him with Mjolnir and he goes can I come in and start off with the actor who plays him is fucking magic I couldn't believe when they announced they'd cast him, that they had chosen this guy, because I mm. thought, of course, how could they have known that this guy is the perfect person to bring this this monstrous person to life? Mm. And then, um, just so, just outside, the bit outside the house, and goes, can I come in? I have mead and crater. I could probably mm-hmm. I could recite this from memory. Yeah. Goes, you would not find me good company. Go, yeah. Oh. And then... Oh. It's just so good. The amount of tension from the off immediately mm. is just palpable. It's so good. Go on, Matt. The, the camera is behind Thor's shoulder, just like up here. And he wa- <laughs> Kratos just beckons him with the axe. And Thor, the camera still above his shoulder, comes and just stands in front of him. And just he, Kratos is tiny mm. compared to him. Yeah. And goes in and, and they sit down, and the fucking tension of the yeah. mead bottle, and he sm- he puts his he slams everything on the table and pours it out, and instantly, I thought, huh, have they made Thor a recovering alcoholic? <laughs> The fact that they got that, they made that so subtle, but mm. the that gets put in your head straight away when he pours it. Because with Thor, all, all we hear about in the first game is what a drunken monster he yeah. is. And then he comes in and you can just, the flat affect in his voice sounds like someone who mm. is normally drinking, who hasn't been. And the first moment where he puts it down on the table and doesn't instantly drink it made me think, oh, that's, that's an interesting like, yeah. choice to say. Is that, yeah. is that what, did you pick up on that? I didn't pick up on that specifically, no. But I just loved how it, it felt like a really high stakes situation immediately. And it obviously it's calling back to the first game, to the very beginning where you meet Boulder, and you don't know who he is. And you think about even in just in terms of comparing them in size, Bald is this scrawny little guy who like pretends that he's not very strong and starts picking a fight with Kratos. And then Thor just comes in, he's absolutely huge, and he just offers him a drink. Like a complete juxtaposition on both sides. Um, but yeah, it just really played out like a really tense scene in a film where you've got your protagonist and your potentially dangerous dodgy guy coming in you don't know what's going to happen it could all kick off any second and you're just waiting for something 
that trigger point where all the anger is going to rise to the surface. You can just feel it bubbling, and I think it was great. And the the mystery, they keep the mystery going the entire time because there's the you have no idea what's going to happen in the next sixty seconds ever because it can go from it's like in in the first game when they when they at the top of the the tallest mountain in Midgard and they've just opened the gate to Jotunheim and so you think oh it might be the end of the game now and then three minutes later you're in the depths of hell and you yeah. go, how the how the fuck did we get here <laughs> and so when when in those moments of quiet and silence when the from when he walks in and sits down and gets the drinks out it's silence and you're going what's gonna happen yeah yeah just what's gonna happen and just think why has he come in to talk why is he here? Why isn't he drinking? And then the big boss bangs on the door and comes in. Odin is she's a mob boss. Basically, that's, yeah, that's, that's exactly the... the vibe. Yeah, that's exactly the vibe that I was getting. I was like, oh, it's just like the Godfather. Not that I've seen that film properly all the way through. But we all know the cultural reference and it has so much of that going on. You know, the car well, I'm gonna quote Thor here, the calm and reasonable person, you know, that is the vibe that Aiden is giving off that he's a friendly guy, he's just here to to chat. There's nothing wrong with it. He's he understands it. It's all good. It's all good. But as long as you do what I say, uh that kind of that kind of thing going on there. But there's this like underlying sense that if you cross him, you're gonna be in big trouble. Um, and there was there was this moment. We're going to skip slowly ahead. In when they're conversing, and Odin kind of offers this deal to Kratos and Atreus, and says, "If you if you stop looking for Tyr, because he's realised that's what Atreus is doing, then I'll we'll leave you alone. We'll go away." Um, I think that that's the deal, isn't it? And then Kratos just turns up. Because uh, Odin says, well, what do you think? And uh, Chris just stands up and he says, after like about three seconds, which feels like the longest three seconds ever, he says, no. Mm. And I, we were all just like, oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah, you know, like the gift, like the gift that people, or whatever, the meme that people do. Um, it was just so, oh, in that one word, so much has been said. So much has been defied. A line has been crossed. So Odin now knows the kind of person, or God rather, that he's dealing with. Um, and that's just so, it's just so impactful. Just that one word. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably one of the best lines. Yeah. Best moment. Okay. It, gets, it gets even better when, like, because they... I love when a character like Odin is a manipulative snake and it is all flawlessly calculated because he's the only yeah. person who knows what's going on the entire mm. time. He knows precisely what he wants and he knows what he needs in order to get it. And it all revolves around him. He's a con man him selling it so he's he starts off how do you get he knows that he needs atreus and he knows that he can't just force you can't force someone like kratos if you try and use force against kratos you're going to lose and so he just gets it and i i wonder whether he knew he must have known yeah otherwise he wouldn't have done this he he knew that kratos would say no he knew. but the yeah, entire knew. point yeah the entire point of all of that theater was to tell atreus don't go looking for tear because mm. he knows that that was that would that would guarantee it gets them moving in the direction he needs them to go. Um, 
And I think I want it's it's so there's so many different layers to it because when so Kratos says when he says no, I thought he he might say oh okay because he was still trying not to pick a fight with people, mm. but then he says afterwards that he did it because. So the the thing that Odin offered Kratos was I'll stop Freya. Oh yes, um, that's right. Im- yeah. Imagining yeah. that that was probably the thing that mm. he, that's the only thing Kratos is really worried about because the well I'll talk about the start uh, a little bit later, but um, he says no because Freya was an, an ally and a friend, mm. and he would not. Make People a bargain wouldn't want any harm to come with her to enemies. Her. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I think it's just so, like, when you finish the game, you you kind of realise all the way through that Odin is putting on a show with one hand publicly. Like, this is what's happening. You're seeing this, but actually in the background, there's a whole heap of other stuff going on that he knows about, and he's like he's playing chess. You know, he's always one step ahead. Um, It's just master manipulator in action, definitely. Um, And I think even to some extent, I'm sure Kratos knows some of the things that are going on in that conversation that aren't being overtly shown. That's natural. That's part of human communication. Um, And a lot of it, so much of that conversation is unsaid. And we, we are left to try and take from it what we can at this stage, this early stage of the game. Um, but looking back, I, can't, I cannot wait to start New Game Plus with all the knowledge I have now and just view it differently. Um, yeah. And now they've got photo I, mode. I know. They didn't have photo mode at the start. <laughs> and, I know. Yeah, it's bad oh. shit. Um, yeah, the, it's the, that's the 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 central like most crucial skill of a con man is no matter what someone has seen you do or knows what you've done because we've heard all the stories about odin and he still makes you think you can take him at face value yeah he still makes you go look we're, we're playing he convinces you that yeah we're sitting down for a nice like normal face value game of checkers okay and in the meantime he's playing three-dimensional chess behind his back and you're just part of his his master plan i love they sold little... that so well yeah so good every time i interacted with him in the game the back of my brain was like you can't trust him you know you can't trust him and then the part of my brain that was seeing what i was seeing was like yeah, but this is fine. The situation is fine. We can trust him. He seems yeah. so reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just so well done. So well done. And um, yeah, there's so many times I was yelling at the TV when playing as Atreus, just be like, no, Atreus, don't <laughs> listen. Don't do it. But then I went along with it as well. We were all <laughs> taken in, definitely. I suppose the question I was going to ask that that I kind of hinted at at the beginning was, I want to know when did you twig about Tear not being Tear? It was honestly something <laughs> when he turned into Odin. Yeah, that yeah. was literally it. Yeah. There was the the it was only <laughs> Brock when mm. Brock. I believe you believe everything yeah. Tear says. It's yeah. the same thing with Odin. So you look, you don't, you just think, how could he come up with that? How do you? He's he's a genius, yeah. and the fact that it was Brock that that yeah was that the twigged. only one that worked it yeah. out. Yeah, um, I I twigged. I I kind of very slowly <sighs> went up to knowing during the course of that conversation where Brock begins to twig just before when he's like now's the time to go i know a way in i know a way into asgard and all this and he starts proclaiming all these things i was like something's wrong yeah (laughs) 
something's not right. I don't like how this is going. I just had this sense of like that something bad was going to happen. Not necessarily that Jay wasn't here, Teddy was, but that something was going wrong in the course of that conversation. And then when Brock started asking these questions, and as soon as Tia slash Odin slapped him, or was it no? Brock slapped him, didn't he? I can't remember what happened. There was some slapping involved. And I was just like, <gasps> every five seconds. Oh, <laughs> and then it, oh, the heartbreak of when he turned into Odin and it essentially murdered Brock. Uh, it was just all going on, all kicking off. All at once, it's a massive sensory overload. I couldn't even process it properly. Um, but yeah, there are a number of times looking back now that I notice things where Odin slips up, where he like first meets Freya and calls her Frigg. And I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. She doesn't like being called Frigg. And then, of course, because the game is so amazing, it distracts you immediately. And you're like, but what they're saying might be important right now. Let's listen to what they're saying. Um, and you forget about it. And you're like, oh, it, it doesn't matter. It's just a thing. Um, but actually, of course, that's what Odin referred to Freya as all the time. So if you're smart enough, you can figure it out to that early stage. But yeah, it really did. It was a, it was one big surprise. And yeah, even the later revelation that, because I, I, I kept saying to Tom, my partner, all the way we were playing through, I was like, you know Tyr's still alive, right? He's not actually dead when we found out that Tyr was Odin. I was like, the real Tyr is still alive. And he was like, no, no, he's not alive, no, no. And then you find him later in prison in Niflheim, I believe. Um, and just having that moment, such a big moment, just tucked away at the end of the game after the main story. Like, you don't, you couldn't even, if you didn't want to play it, you might not ever find Tyr. And to have such a big moment just tucked tucked into the latter stages there was a was a ballsy move, but it was very effective and I really enjoyed it. I don't that know was, how you found that. That was yeah. one of the finding tear at the end. That felt mm. a bit one of the only Quick. few things that felt a bit unnecessary and bolted on. Mm. You reckon, it didn't even have yeah. a cut scene with it. No. And, and yeah. We sort of we've I had Tear he was so real mm. and who how he behaved made so much sense of being trapped and broken because people get broken you can yeah. have these mighty heroes and they can be broken by by the things that happen to them and just absolutely everything about him made so much sense so now when you're faced with oh the real thing mm. you think i don't i don't know who this person is i thought i yeah. un i thought i understood everything about this yeah. person um it was and... just a very very strange feeling wasn't it i was like i don't know if i can trust him even though yeah. it's the real version <laughs> and i'm like i still feel really disappointed in, in him as a character <laughs> just like even when i didn't know it was odin i was like Oh, he's really a bit of a letdown, isn't he, really? Um, he's not doing much. Um, but yeah, it was just a very strange, very strange feeling. And then to, you kind of, you can go around to the different realms and find him in different places, just being like, leave me alone. I'm doing yoga. I want to look at the sky. Leave me alone. And then, so, yeah, it's just a bit of a strange character, really. Yeah, and when just the the fact that as Brock can't Brock can't handle bullshit, mm. he's got the best bullshit detector, mm. and he was the only one who could who could have seen through um, Odin, and yeah. just the fact that. Just him dying is just awful. Mm. Just completely yeah. awful in every way. To have that yeah. moment kind of snatched away and turned on its head was, yeah, 
yeah very dramatic definitely just really heartbreaking especially to see the reaction of all the characters and then to realize that what's actually been happening to this point in the game has all been a lie <laughs> what you thought you knew was not what you knew is a, a big thing to deal with definitely yeah. odin's monstrous back to we, we can return back to the um the opening scene again yes because that's the kind of, that's the sort of tangent we can end yeah. up flying flying down from 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 that and just the way odin odin walks around the entire house and then sits down and he drinks yeah. from both of the cups and is showing i'm i'm the the one in charge here and he talks about the way he talks about Magni and Modi mm. and the way that Thor's wife says, oh, they were that way because Odin threw them at any problem he could and that just sent them sent them mad. And you just go, oh, yeah, Thor's a real person and he's, a, mm. he's an abused son yeah. and he is exactly the same as like the sort of trajectory that Kratos has had through his life mm. um, because he was a destroyer. He was the servant of Ares and his dad tried to kill him. That's why he's got the great big scar in his stomach. Yeah. Um, and, oh, I just realised, perhaps. Um, so I thought, you know... Kratos hacks Thor's yeah. stomach yeah. and it doesn't heal for the entire game. That's a little bit, I don't know whether it might be a bit blunt, a bit of a blunt like mirror because Kratos's um, big I'm scar sorry. in his stomach was, yeah. he's got a big I'm scar in yeah, his stomach. Right. He's got a big yeah. scar in his stomach. Yeah. Um, and uh, when yeah, so the, the the way that they mirror each other and mm. Kratos sees Thor in himself and the other way around. Yeah. Um, and when um, Odin says, oh, Magni and Modi, they were worthless, and Thor just turns away because you think they, that's what abusive, like, like parent-child relationships are mm. like. It doesn't matter how strong and powerful the child might become; they are. They feel like a tiny They're little terrified alien, thing. Yeah. And it also struck me that so him insulting those two and going, "Ah, yeah, whatever." Self-defense. That's a brutal word to be. Imagine that being mm. said by your father about your grandchildren. Yeah. And then he moves on to Boulder. And he says, he had value, my tracker, my closer. Yeah. yeah. He's his son. Boulder yeah. was Odin's son. And you would never know that from the way he talks about him. No. And it's like, you killed my son. You killed Thor's brother. And we want repayment for that. That just... Those those clues of the real darkness in Odin, but the the show he puts on is so. Oh, mm. you don't have to worry about me. Yeah, I'm, just a good I'm not guy. the problem here. Yeah, oh, yeah. This it's so complex. I think it's one of it's kind of a grim topic, but I think it's one of the best portrayals in any um, medium or a scene of coercive control. Um, abuse within like a family sphere, um, and how, how frankly villainous that is. When you think about video game villains, you know they're usually like more on the pantomime end of the scale. <laughs> you know they've got X motivation because just because they're evil. Um, but in this one, it's just an illustration of hunger for knowledge and power and how that corrupts and and yeah turns someone into 
someone who will do anything to get that knowledge and power, even if it means abusing <laughs> the family around you. Um, and that is, it's, yeah, it's interesting to to kind of dive into that and and how it's impacting the story, definitely. Yeah, uh, cheers. Yeah, that is, it, it captures that kind of dynamic perfectly because how how do you the most interesting stories always end up being about families and particularly the families of gods they're all so capricious and strange because they're immortal and powerful but you can still boil it down to that kind of that same family dynamic relationships between individuals are still going to be the same kinds of relationships and yeah it's just horrible the way just seeing him the way he interacts with his family mm. uh, yeah but yeah i'm sure we can discuss in another episode like the relationships between him and sif and Thrude as well and like the dynamics between you know, obviously the way that women are represented as goddesses and how that plays against the male gods and just the you know this podcast as you might know is about feminism and how that interacts with gaming and i think there's a lot to explore there in terms of how that's reflecting some of the more tox toxic aspects of of um i've forgotten the word patriarchy that's the one <laughs> um it will come back to me eventually. It's a slow start in January. Um, but yeah, there's certainly a lot we could talk about there. And also, actually, another thing that's occurred to me, toxic masculinity as well, and how a lot of the characters, Kratos being the main one, that kind of look at that and move away from it and accept themselves and grow and like understand that they don't need to hold themselves to this impossible standard of of like the alpha male mm. to be to be a good person in society or the best uh, or a good father <laughs> you know that kind of thing um there's all sorts i'm sure we can we can delve into in more detail 